In this video, I will explain how a DC motor boat works, specifically how it floats and how it propels itself through the water. There are three scientific concepts that must be understood to explain how the DC motor boat works. They are upthrust, Newton's laws of motion, and the Lorentz force, otherwise known as the electromagnetic force. Upthrust is defined as the force opposing the weight of an object that acts on that object when it is either partially or fully submerged in a fluid. This phenomenon occurs due to the way pressure varies with height. At greater depths of a fluid, the pressure of the fluid is much higher. This idea of pressure increasing as the depth of a fluid increases is reflected in the formula pressure equals depth times the density of the fluid times the local gravitational constant. For an object in a fluid, the pressure acting on top of the object is smaller in magnitude than the pressure acting below the object. Since force equals pressure times area, for the same area of an object, the force acting above the object is less than the force acting below. Forces acting horizontally as a result of pressure will cancel each other out. We now see that there is a net force acting upwards on the object. That force is upthrust, which is what allows our DC motor boat to float. Newton's third law states that when one body, body A, exerts a force on another body, body B, body B will simultaneously exert a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction onto body A. These pairs of forces are known as action-reaction pairs. When the paddle turns, the paddle itself exerts a force on each individual molecule of water in the pool. By Newton's third law, each molecule of water therefore will exert a normal contact force on the paddle. The sum of forces the water molecules exert on the boat lead to the presence of a force acting on the boat, propelling it. Newton's second law states that the net force an object experiences is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its net acceleration. Therefore, from this equation, we can infer that for the boat of non-zero mass, if it has non-zero net force acting on it, it must have a non-zero acceleration, which leads to an increase of the boat's velocity from rest propelling the boat. A larger paddle can exert a force on more water molecules, resulting in a larger net force acting on the boat and subsequently a larger acceleration for a larger final velocity. The Lorentz force in the context of our DC motor refers to the force that a current carrying conductor experiences in the presence of an external magnetic field. This force occurs due to the fact that the current itself generates a magnetic field that interacts with the external magnetic field in such a way that there are regions where the magnetic field is both stronger and regions where it's weaker. This results in a force that acts on the conductor in a direction from the stronger to the weaker field. The direction of said force can be determined with a mnemonic, Fleming's left hand rule. Here is a simplified diagram of the DC motor. Current flows from A to D in the coil. Utilizing Fleming's left hand rule, we see that a force acts downwards on AB and upwards on CD. These coupled forces cause a torque about the coil, causing it to rotate. The split ring commutator and carbon brushes ensure that every 180 degrees, the direction of current reverses in the coil from A to D, then to D to A, and A to D again, and this cycle repeats. This ensures that the direction of current remains the same for a specific region of space where the coil exists, ensuring that the direction of force acting on the coil is the same on that side, leading to constant rotation. At points where the coil is not in contact with the slit ring commutator, for example, when it is vertical, the coil will continue rotating due to its inertia. The rotation of this coil is what powers the paddle of our DC motor boat. 